Hello, everybody. How's everyone doing? I hope everyone's fine. So, I have some great news. My library is open again. Yay! And if you know me, the library is my favorite place to go during the summer because I just, I just love... If you know, I, I love walking up. I love walking to the library and going into the library. And I, I love reading. Um, my ideal place to actually go or on a date is to the library. But then I thought to myself, I was like, that's how much of an introvert I am. Go on. My first thing, the first thing that I have to do, want to do on a date is go to the library. You can't talk at a library. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that's not the point. And technically my library is not, the building's not open. But, I mean, the workers are in there, the librarians are in there, but it's not open to the public yet. So, but books are coming in and coming out, so I got to get on the groovy chain. It's actually been open for like, I think since the beginning of June they've been doing curbside pickup and it's almost it's the middle the middle the last day of the middle week in June so I think they've been open since the beginning of June and um so but curbside picket pickup is there it's you just call and it, and like you have a book on hold as soon as I heard it I one online to find books that I need that I a uh, bunch of books I wanted to see and so and I returned that other book if you I did a, a review on the other book that I had it was about the found it was called the founding brother it was about James Monroe no I think G, no it was James Madison I always get those James mixed up Thomas Jefferson Aaron Burr Adams, John Adams, everyone in 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 the government. Um, not all the founding fathers, but the important ones, I guess. So, um, so yeah, I I did a review on that. Um, on um a, a video on a video review on that, and um. One of my books, I got, um, one of my books was, came, um, I got an email saying that one of my books was ready on, I think, Monday, and today's Friday, and it was, uh, Hitler's First Hundred Days, and, um, so I went to go pick it up, I called saying that I'm coming, I went to go pick it up. Um, it's, I, I've read up until the first chapter, um, cause I, I, um, um, it, it's, it's a little hard to read in the beginning because you don't, um, it, it, it's a little, Actually, I feel like just any history book is a little hard to read when it first starts off. It's because um, you just don't. If you if you were someone who like just solely focused on Hitler and World War II, um, then you would probably understand some jargon or just focus on just German history in general. You would probably understand some of the people that were in it, but. It it does it, it does give you a brief understanding of who else was around Hitler as he became in power. He started to come into power, but um but I mean towards the end the ending of the first chapter I was just like, Oh, okay, I'm on it. I'm I I guess I'm kinda on board now. And um the way I um well I can't it's this is not technically a whole review because I haven't read I have I think there are nine chapters and it's like 500 pages and um I'm only on page 22 24 5 I don't know um so I can't give you a whole 
a whole review on this book. Yeah, but um, it's basically the the first chapter is basically saying how Hitler came into power, how um, basically how a lot of people are um were reacting towards the end of the the chapter. A lot of it focused a little bit on how. The public was reacting to um, the Nazi, I forget what the, Nazi Socialist Germans Worker Party. <laughs> I'm sorry. I totally forget the name. But um, just took over all of politics and how everyone, how the public was reacting to that. So um, it was good. Um and that's and that's one of the reasons why I um I mean and I just wanted to learn how Hitler's first hundred days were basically that's that's the reason I saw it and that's the reason when I saw it that's the reason why I got it and um the thing is um I didn't get to I they had this the synopsis on they obviously had the synopsis when I was um. When I was picking out the book, because um, the the way I choose history books, um, or historical fiction books, I also like historical fiction books too. Um, but the mainly how I choose. Just actually, this goes for books, the books I read just in general. But mainly now in my life, I usually read historical fiction and mostly history books um now what i do to pick um my history books that i want to read and these this is for fun this is not for school um what i do is i read the synopsis or and i or like usually with a book like this with the um with a, a paper cover they have the um synopsis and like what's about in the right here um and um yeah so and if it's longer it might go to the back of here but this just talk this is and it also talks about the author too and so um and it's it's good to to know what your what what your author is like who who the author is the background of the author like in my in my history class um this in my history class I'm doing something where I'm writing about um I'm basically learning about historiography and a good thing to know to know when you're doing your research um is to understand where the research is coming from so a good way to is understand the background of your um of the person who you 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 who's who wrote the the essay that or the who wrote the research that you're using in your paper so and just and also to add on that point what i do this is even before I took the my, my classes to say how to analyze a good um, something to put in your research paper. I usually like to look at um, the um, table of contents. So the table of contents. Oh wait, no, I read the introduction, not the first um, chapter. Um, so, um, I usually like to read the table of contents. The first introduc- the introduction is quarter past eleven, one hundred days, a thousand years. And we all know the Third Reich did not last a thousand years. Um, <laughs> they thought they were going to last a thousand years, but they did not, obviously. Um, chapter one, crisis if you please. Chapter two, mystery tour. Ooh, mysterious. Chapter three, assault. Chapter four, the communist beast. Chapter five, the German spring. Chapter six, 
the Jewish grandmother, chapter 7, the administration of life, sorry, um, chapter 8, this enormous planet, in chapter 9, the 100 days, and then, you know, the postscript and acknowledgments, um, so, the thing is that they didn't, the, when I was on, I was, um, us, usually when I put stuff on hold at the library, I do it through a catalog and not through, um, so I can't see the whole entire book. Um, so I can't see the chapters, but I can only see the synopsis of the book. I mean, the synopsis is good. But seeing the chapters as well makes me realize, do I want to read this book or do I just want to... Mm. I, I, it's better, it's a better thing to use it when you are, ac or you are buying the book or you actually can see the book in person. Because like, there is a... Um, I always pass, when I go to work, I always pass by... Um, I go to work on the train. I don't have a car. Um, there, I always pass by a little bitty shop at, um, at this, um, if you know Boston, if you know Massachusetts, there's this place called South Station and like, it's just a really big station and there's this little bitty shop, bookshop right there and it's, it's like, it's like a candy store for me. And I always pass by and I say, you know what, I'm not going to buy anything. I'm not going to buy anything. I always pass by saying, don't go in there because you know you're going to buy something. And I always, and, and I, I give in and then I go in there and I say, you know what, you're not going to, you're not going to, you're just going to look at it. You're just going to look at it. And then I, I look at the, I look at the, the the bio, I look at the synopsis, I look at the chapters, I look at um, everything, basically. And I, um, every everything, I, the background of the whole book. And um, if, one, if it's too expensive, I write down the name of the book. And I'm just like, maybe I could find it online for a cheaper price. And two... Um, or two, or, um, I just buy the book and I'm just, I'm happy that I bought the book, but then I'm just sad that I wasted all that money. Well, I, I mean, I didn't waste it cause I'm, cause I'm going to read the book, but it's just like, ugh, I keep, t I, I don't like it cause I, I feel really bad and I buy like several books too. And that's just, oh man. And, um, sorry, my nose is really back now. Maybe it's the pollen. I don't know. I don't feel like it's the pollen, but it, it's, it's, it's only in the morning. And, and so it's probably going to get worse, but throughout the day, but, um, what, um, what, um, in my history class, what it, um, looking at, what it's taught me, what it, it has taught me is that um, just looking, also looking at the bio, the biography of the, um, I mean, the biography is not going to, his, the, an author biography is not going to be in a book, but, but like knowing the, but usually they have something that tells you why they wrote this book or like, or usually just doing your research on your own time about the biographer, like sometimes they can, how they grew up can affect the way they see, they view history. And that's a good thing too. That's a, that's a good thing. And, um, yeah, this is, and, um, just reading, even though what life has taught me since I, 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 started going down the path of loving history and, and like reading history books it's like there's so much that I can learn and there's so much so many interpretations of one 
thing. Like, yeah, you want to learn about Hitler, but everyone has their different own interpretation of Hitler. And this is not just going to tell you what, I mean, his interpretation of Hitler's first days doesn't, isn't going to tell, going to tell you what someone else thinks about Hitler's first days. I don't, I don't know if he thought it was a success or not. I don't know, but I mean, obviously I've only read the introduction. Um, so, um, yeah, that's my take on it. And, um, you can't, you can't stop learning a, a smart thing. It, you know what? A smart people, a smart person knows that they don't know everything. Whereas a, a someone who's not that's who's not intel who's not intelligent knows thinks that they know everything and they want to boast about how they know everything, but they don't. And um, and um, that's the thing. And that's the thing. I've never really called myself smart until. Um, and I think that's why that's one of the reasons why everyone wants to be wants to seem like they're an empath or um or an INFJ is because we get that rep that we we know we're we don't we don't call ourselves smart until um because we don't feel like we know everything in the world we we all you can learn every you can learn things every day and i think it's just people want to feel special and I get that. I mean, I want to feel special, and but I can't always go around saying that I'm smart. I can't go around always saying that I'm I I'm I'm can do this when I can't. And um, I think that's 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 what really caused me to make the video about um why everyone thinks they're why everyone thinks they're an empath or something like that i forget the title of the video um so what i want to say is that yeah just remember that you're all that you you no matter how old you are if you think that um y you can learn so much from so many people one point of view is not the same point of view as someone else from like one point of view from the top is not the same point of view from someone at the bottom. Um, and like it can be, this can be applied to this mentality can be applied to so many things like languages, like French. I learned French very young when I was six years old, but French is still changing. I mean, yeah, I'm, I know some slang, some Parisian slang, but, like, and it's just like, and I still can't, I'm still, I'm still not that confident in speaking French, and, but you know what, I think just because my family doesn't speak French, and my brother, he was also in my, in the French immersion class, but he never spoke French with me, so, and I, I'm realizing now that I'm, learn, I'm looking at I'm looking at Japanese and looking at Chinese and looking at German and looking at Russian. It's, I'm learning that like you can still I I can still learn about French just it's because I'm still just because I know French doesn't mean I still can't learn about the language, still learn more about the language. So, um and I wish I knew that sooner because then I would probably still, I would probably be more inclined to speak French more often with people rather than just, well, I mean, I couldn't find any people. I mean, I know there are apps now. I'm just finding out there are apps now where you can just find people to speak it with. Um, but... I'm I'm going off on a tangent. I I start getting other ideas in my head, and then I start speaking. But um, I came here. This was originally supposed to be about 
um, how the library's back and, well, how my library's back. I don't know if everybody else's back library, but about the curbside pickup. Yeah, and I got Hitler's 100 First Days. So. I also got another book, too, but that book hasn't come in. I think they probably got it. They're probably ordering it from another library. Um, it's called, um, to me, he was just dead. And it's memoirs about, um, I forget, about, about just famous dads. So, um, yes. So that, and so that looks promising too. So, um, in defense, I love reading. So if you meet me, tell if you ever meet me or if you ever see me we can discuss books so that's all i want to say bye